Hey, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Got a couple of topics to cover in today's video, including the recently released RTX 2060. A lot of people have been talking about NVIDIA's new graphics card, which really got the win taken out from it because of the supposed leak of the GTX 1160, which really is the GPU I feel like gamers want. A ray tracing GPU that's tried to be released at a budget doesn't really make any sense because it's trying to cater towards conflicting areas. Yes, it's a ray tracing oriented GPU, but you're also trying to release this GPU at a lower price price point. So who is this GPU really going after? It's trying to find that middle ground, but instead of that middle ground, you should really just go all in on one end or the other instead of making this hybrid GPU. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Also, one of the more iconic PC first person shooters has gone free to play. That game is of course Dirty Bomb. You can play it now for free. So I want to talk a little bit about that. And also the system requirements for Anthem have been unveiled with that game's upcoming demo being released. And of course the official release not too far after that, the game's officially going to be released on February 22nd. Now is a great time to look at that game system requirements. So we'll talk all about that at the end of this video. First, let's talk about the RTX 2060. And so far, what I've seen from the benchmarks of this GPU, they look pretty good if you're not using ray tracing. If you use ray tracing, forget about it. Even 1080p is going to lag behind with a lot of these games. And you know, we're talking Battlefield 5 1080p medium settings. That's just not the optimal experience gamers want. And for those gamers that do want a game at a budget, they're just looking for standard gaming performance and with the supposed leak of the GTX 1160 as well, the excitement surrounding this GPU has really dissipated. Now let's see if the 1160 actually comes to fruition right now. All signs point towards that GPU happening. So the $350 price tag for the 2060 kind of seems a little bit crazy considering the fact that the GTX 1060 was released at $250. Now these 20 series GPUs have had a inherent price increase. The 2070 was super expensive, the 2080 was super expensive as was the 2080. DTI, but usually you would point towards those 60 series GPUs being that GPU for those of us that are on a little bit more of a budget, a GPU you could fit in that six to $800 PC build. And maybe you can do that with a $350 GPU, but at that $350 price point, it's really inching closer to that 70 tier than really the 60 tier. So this isn't a great option for those of us on a budget and for those of you that really want to take advantage of ray tracing and all of this new technology and want the best performance, at that point the 2060 isn't offering you enough performance so it's trying to find that weird middle ground and instead, from what I can tell, this GPU isn't going to have much of an audience. Either gamers are going to spend the extra money and go for a 2070 at the very least or waiting for the aforementioned 1160 and see if that comes to fruition. Because I would imagine a GTX 1160 which would strip away ray tracing, that would be that that 60 series GPU that budget minded gamers would actually have their eyes on if it was priced around $250. But now people are throwing around the theory that because there is no excitement around the 2060, is the 1160 going to be inherently gimped some way? That I hope doesn't happen. Give the 1160 as an option for those gamers that want to spend the least amount of money but get great performance. They don't have any interest in ray tracing. But right now, I do think the 2060 is a little bit of a fumble just because there isn't really an audience for it. Again, if you want to go the cheaper route, you're going to get a GTX 1060 or you're going to get a 1070 right now or you're going to wait for an 1160. If you want that more expensive ray tracing oriented GPU, you're going to look towards a 2070, 2080 or probably even a 2080 Ti. Moving on from that, now let's talk about Dirty Bomb going free to play. Dirty Bomb was a title that I didn't spend a lot of time with, but when this game was released, there was a certain level of hype and anticipation surrounding it. And I'll read right from the Dirty Bomb website and what they said about this move. Quote, late last year, we announced we were ending active development on Dirty Bomb. In that post, we said that after one more update, development would see. But as we sat down to discuss what fixes we would make, the contents of that build changed. Instead, we wanted to turn this update into a celebration of Dirty Bomb, allowing players old and new to experience everything without a cost. We have been working to remove all monetization from Dirty Bomb and also have thrown in a few extra treats as a thank you to all of our players for supporting the title over the years. This update will go live next Tuesday, January 15th. A bunch of modifications have been made to the game, but Dirty Bomb starting Tuesday, January 15th will be absolutely free to play. Now, it does look like they won't be updating the game any longer after this, but that's a pretty nice gesture from the guys that worked on the game. So what's happening to the servers of the game after the update? Specifically, they said that dedicated servers will be running in active regions until the end of 2019. Beyond that, no decision has been made so far. As you may see, Multiplay are closing down their community server hosting from February 28, 2019. If you own a server or would like to find out more information, 
information, head on over to our help desk to check out the server FAQ. I think this is something that's going to be monitored month by month, see how gamers take to it after it goes free to play. And hey, if the reception does turn out to be pretty strong, maybe they'll go back on their work and maybe they'll continue work on Dirty Bomb. If the appetite is there, I'm sure they'll appease that. This has happened before and usually when these games do move free to play, yes, more people will check it out just on the fact that it is free now, but it's not like it's going to have this gigantic, robust increase of a player base that's super invested into the experience. So I wouldn't expect that with Dirty Bomb, but still something to monitor. And at the very least, you can check out the game free on Tuesday, January 15th. And lastly, Anthem is one of the more anticipated titles of early 2019. I don't know what the exact anticipation level is because, you know, everything that's happened with Bioware, with Mass Effect Andromeda, then EA as a publisher, just not being everybody's favorite publisher right now. I feel like that's taken something away from Anthem. However, it's still a game that some gamers are excited for and the system requirements for the game have been revealed. So I want to take a quick look at that. First up, the minimum system requirements for Anthem have it pegged at an Intel Core i5-3570 or an AMD FX6350 for the CPU, so pretty surprising to see that still do work. Minimum RAM has it at 8 gigabytes of RAM, so you can see where recommended is probably going to go. Minimum GPU, this is really weird. The NVIDIA GTX 760 on the NVIDIA side, AMD 7970 or an R9 280X. A 280X and a 7970 are far superior to a GTX 760, so that's something to monitor, and we'll see how that plays out, but as you're going to see with the recommended GPU listings, those GPUs are a lot more comparable to each other here with the 760 and the 7970, a big discrepancy between the two. Speaking of recommended requirements, let's talk about that. Recommended CPU requirement is an Intel Core i7-4790 at 3.6 GHz or an AMD Ryzen 3 1300X at 3.5 GHz. So there's a big discrepancy between those two. Just like with the 3570 and the 6350, the 3570 is actually closer to the Ryzen 3 1300X. This just comes across more of a core count thing to me, which really with the CPU requirements these days, that's what I've been noticing more and more, that it's not the quality of the CPU itself, it just comes down to core count, and the i7-4790 with hyper-threading is more comparable to the Ryzen 3. The recommended RAM requirement, 16 gigabytes of RAM, not too surprising there as a more intensive game. 12 to 16 gigabytes has become more of a regular thing. Recommended GPU requirement, again, unlike the minimum GPU requirement, this makes a lot more sense in NVIDIA GTX 1060. They also have the RTX 26 listed. I'm just going to take the 1060 because the 1060 is a weaker GPU than the 2060, so I don't know why they would say 1060 or 2060. That's like me saying the 1060 or the GTX 1080. Well, pick one. Those are two far different GPUs. On the AMD side of things, we have the AMD RX 480, which is comparable to the 1060. So again, I think it is in line with the 1060 or a 480 being recommended for 1080p gameplay. If you go to 4K, then something like a 2060 will probably be more of a necessity. And then lastly, you will need 50 gigabytes of free hard drive space required to download the game. Again, I don't know exactly how high the anticipation level for Anthem is. I think as more and more gameplay has been revealed of the game, excitement surrounding the game has been increasing, so there is that. And of course, on PC, if you have an Origin Access Premier membership, you will be able to play the game with a subscription to that. Otherwise, the game will be $59.99. I'm right there with you. It's a freelancer job. Always has been. But the Anthem still rages. So that's going to conclude this video, guys. Again, let me know your thoughts on the RTX 2060. Do you think I'm off base or do you think I'm on point in that it's really not going to find a consumer base to attract and that gamers are either going to go for one of the higher end options in the 2070, 2080, or 2080 Ti, or they're going to go with a 10 series option, or they're going to wait for the 1160. I just don't think there's a lot of clamor surrounding the 2060 right now. Again, Dirty Bomb is going free to play on January 15th. And again, the system requirements for Anthem have been released, and I don't think they're all too surprising based Based on initially what we're seeing. That's gonna wrap up this video, guys. If you have a request for a future video, leave it in the comment section down below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the 
the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.